Hello everyone, welcome to my brand new Let's Play series of Colony Ship, a post-Earth role-playing game. I'm Colonel RPG, and I'm very happy to have you here with me as I check out the newest game. It's the newest game by Iron Tower Studio, the makers of the incredible The Age of Decadence and the really, really awesome Dungeon Rats, which uh, were both based on the same engine and on the same world, and uh, they were actually very different games when it came down to the type of choices you made in the game but not so much when it came to how you interacted with the game. This is not using the same engine as the Age of Decadence. It uses a similar design style to the Age of Decadence, but it now uses the Unreal engine, and uh, it looks it looks a lot better. And uh, it uh, hopefully plays just as well, or even better, who knows? Well, actually I do, because by the time you watch this, and by the time you get to play the early access version of the game, I've already been playing it for a little bit. So, yeah, uh, this is gonna be not a complete playthrough, because it is the early access version of the game. Uh, it comes out on the 6th of April, 2021, and uh, the final version of the game is slated for potentially late 2022. The folks at Iron Tower Studio, who were very kind to send the game my way, uh, have told me that they are planning on staying in early access until then, and releasing a few more areas, quite a lot more areas, in fact, <laughs> because the game right now has three companions that can join your party, they, it has three areas as far as I know, and more are still to come, obviously, so yeah, I'm obviously gonna do a full Let's Play when the game comes out, but for right now, let's start a new game, and let's make our character. So the fundamental aspects about the character system of Colony Ship are still very similar to the Age of Decadence, but the skills are completely different because it's a completely different world. And it, it, it also comes with firearms, so, well, it, it's also got all of the stuff over here for pistols, shotguns, rifles, and SMGs. The combat is still based on the same principles of critical strike, evasion, and armor, so you're going to be able to specialize in either evasion or or armor, or actually, you suppose, I suppose you could have both if you wanted to, although I'm not sure that is a good idea. And then we have speech skills over here, persuasion, streetwise, and impersonate, which are actually very similar to the Age of Decadence, which is, I, I think, is a good thing. And then stealth for lockpick, steel, and sneak. And then science, biotech, computers, and electronics. Hmm. And I think I know what kind of character I'm going to be. Let's call our character Titus in, in memory of Titus, the... Uh, the, I think the base name of the Age of Decadence, uh, and uh, let's see. So right here on the right side, you're going to want to pay attention to the requirements for some of these feats, because you start off as having access to only one single feat, you're going to want to choose it carefully. And as you can see, a lot of them require maxed out stats over here on this side. So one thing I will do for this early access Let's Play is going to be to have charisma enough to hire three party members. And as you can see down here, initial disposition changes, maximum followers also changes. And I say three party members, uh, we could go for, let's get, stay with eight. Uh, I, I say three party members because there are only three party members available right now. I want to have them all in this early access let's play, so I will go with that. And I will also focus on being able to hit people with my rifle. With my SMG, let's go with an SMG instead. So we're gonna tag two skills. Actually, well, I'll say two skills. We're gonna need a little bit more intelligence to be able to tag more skills. You can max that out and uh, and have more tagged skills, but I'm not gonna do that. Let's go with two of them. And now that we're looking at skills, we're also gonna look right here at the right side and look at the feats, because obviously, as I was saying, you know, some of this stuff is really important and it does require maxed out stats. Now, it's not just maxed out stats. Some of them require, for example, Critical Strike 3 over here, which I believe, can I, yeah, I can only have one right now. So, hmm, I'm not sure how that's gonna go. It's kind of interesting that uh, you can see the accuracy right here. That's pretty good. But if we bring that up, I'm really bad at accuracy. That requires perception. We're gonna look into that in a little bit. But for my feet at the moment, I wanna have Gunfighter right here. Because Controlled Burst, even though it is actually pretty cool, requires strength, and I'm not planning on going up on strength. I wanna, or, I'm not planning on having a whole lot of strength anyway. So we're gonna go on Gunfighter right there, and obviously that spends our feet. I will wanna have eight perception, and that gives us access to a bunch of other stuff as well, which is pretty cool, and as you can see, our accuracy goes up. That is very important as well. And we're actually going to put one point over here. We have three points available. That's pretty sweet. And our constitution, I don't want it to be too low or our strength. So let's keep it like that. 
one thing that is very important to do in the Age of Decadence, although in this game might be a little bit different, is that in the Age of Decadence you really want to specialize. And by that, I mean, basically later on in the game, you're gonna want to have access to the best abilities that you have at your disposal. So if you wanna max out, like, Critical Strike to be able to, you know, do some really, really wild sneak attacks and stuff like that, then you want, you know, obviously sneak is another important skill for that, but uh, you want to specialize on max that in trying to max that out, but there's only a limited number of skill points in the game. In this game, things might be a little bit different, so I don't know. I, we're we're going to see. We're going to find out. So what I'm going to want to have is armor. I'm going to have streetwise for speech skills, although you can obviously have more than one. And in fact, I want to tag that, so let's go ahead and do that. And I want to look at what biotech is. There isn't always time to track down a doctor to extract an implant from a newly minted corpse. Learn the basics and improve both your chances of survival and quality of life. That looks like a good time. Let's go with biotech, even though I think there's a character that will teach us biotech early in the game. So this is going to be my build. At the time of recording, I can't give you tips regarding what best build it would be for you, so you're going to have to try and mess around with it. So let's just very quickly go over our portraits here. And I'm going to stick with that one. And let's very quickly get done with character creation. I think we're good for that. There's uh, some customization. Obviously, you can pay attention to that. I think they're going to add more stuff later. Uh, I don't know. Speci specifically regarding the tattoos. Because right now, nothing changes if you click that. So, let's start the game. It is the year of our Lord 2754. You will never feel the sun's warmth under a blue sky, never hear the wind in the branches of a tree, and never swim in the ocean because you had the misfortune to be born on the ship. Capital S. Ship. You have never seen Earth, and you'll never see Proxima Centauri either. Your past and future both sacrificed by some dim and nameless ancestor to the greater good of the mission. Starfarer, they called her. A pretty name for a retrofitted interplanetary freighter. She had already been 20 years in service when she was rechristened and showing every minute of it. No one is certain the ship will actually reach its destination, and nobody much cares, since no one alive now will live to see it. Fatalism is the prevailing philosophy of the shipborn. Make the best life you can and consign all your what-ifs and might-have-beens to the void. So we can answer a few questions to define our character's beliefs and opinions, which I actually will do because this is a good introduction of uh, to the setting. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm not sure what happens when we skip it. So let's find out. The ship was launched by a neo-Christian conglomerate dedicated to establishing a religious colony on a distant world. The original 50,000 passengers, the so-called first generation, were true believers in the mission, capital M mission. They sacrificed whatever lives they had on Earth and demanded strict obedience to the laws of God and the ship from their children. Unfortunately, the generations that followed lacked their forebearers' fervent will to sacrifice. This satisfaction led to open revolt against the authorities, called the Mutiny, and the Mutiny metastasized into a civil war. While the mutineers dealt a decisive blow to the old order, they did not eradicate it completely. When the fires died and the smoke finally dissipated, three factions emerged from the wreckage of the old order. The Protectors of the Mission, the Brotherhood of Liberty, and the Church of the Elect each of them promising their own version of the future. You've always thought that rebelling against the ship authority was a mistake. The environment itself hostile enough to human life and order is always preferable to chaos. Let's go with that. In fact, you would go on to say, the authorities were wrong. They should have accepted the need for change so that it could happen peacefully and gradually, but waging war within the confines of the ship was pure madness. The ship suffered extensive damage during the Civil War, but remains operational. The hull was breached in several places, and frantic efforts to avoid a meltdown crippled the main reactor. Radiation increased in places to lethal levels, and several areas remain dangerous to this day. When a small percentage of children in the habitat were first born deformed, they were branded mutants and immediately shunned. The young were abandoned, and those whose defects didn't manifest until later were driven out. With the condition of the fusion reactor degrading to dangerous levels, and the number of volunteers for jobs in areas exposed to radiation remaining few, the mutants negotiated a pact with the Covenant, granting them protection from harassment and violence in exchange for their maintenance of the engines and other vital ship systems. They've always thought that ostracizing fellow humans based on genetic differences is wrong. Hopefully our descendants will live in harmony in the future colony. 
The place you call home is known as the Pit, and to some more affectionately as the Free City. Calling the towers of containers rising from the depths of a cargo hold a city is a bit of a stretch, and so is the other half of it. With no kind of law or government, freedom mostly means you're free to kill or be killed. On the plus side, housing is cheap, and keeping overhead low is a priority when we have nothing. The real cities, makeshift metropolis sprawling across many decks, are called habitats. They offer much better living conditions for those who can afford it, but to live there you have to pick a side among the factions vying for control. Nobody in the pit gives a damn about their struggles, but like Earth before it, nothing in this world is free. Just keep in mind you might get more than you sign up for. As far as you're concerned, true freedom means being free from laws passed down by your supposed betters. The ship is en route to Proxima B, an Earth-like planet orbiting Proxima Centauri. After launch, a deep space probe transmitted highly detailed images of the surface, which revealed one minor setback. This very habitable world is already inhabited. Since the voyage is estimated to take close to 400 years, it's possible that by the time the ship arrives, the colonists will encounter a mature civilization corresponding to Earth's late Middle Ages. If that's the case... We will be guests in this new world, living among the local population and accepting their culture and traditions as our own. As inevitably happens in dark and challenging times, some people turn to God for reassurance, the promise of an end to pain and hunger or failing an end, at least a purpose. The Church of the Elect reject both the protectors of the mission and the Brotherhood of Liberty as worldly fools distracted by politics and their own egos. Teaching their adherents that they were chosen by God, the Church frames the journey of the ship as a centuries-long test of faith. We all face a series of difficult trials, yes, but with a very definite end. When the ship arrives at her destination, Judgment Day awaits every citizen. The righteous will be welcomed into the promised land of Proxima B, while the unrepentant will be returned to the hell from which we fled, Earth, to suffer for all eternity. The way you see it, a reference here to the Bible, I believe. Honor he who was reborn, and you too shall be reborn into the new world that awaits at the end of our long journey. Come the dawn. I'm not actually sure if it is, but it feels like it is. The reference here, he who was reborn is Jesus. And uh, the new world here is a possibly a reference to the original title this game was going to have. Maybe. I don't know. I think it was called at one point the new world or new something. The Protectors' one truth is the mission. And the sole way to ensure successful completion of the mission is to follow the old ways. The ways of the fathers, forefathers, and founding fathers capital F, capital F, are together the beam upon which the ship travels to our ultimate destination. The mutiny, which through their steadfast and timely intervention and was thankfully aborted, was the ultimate betrayal of the old ways, of everyone who had come before, the nullification of every sacrifice and every life dedicated to the mission. Sworn to regain control of the ship, the protectors will subjugate anyone who threatens the mission. Over the last century, they have managed to expand their enclave somewhat, but the Brotherhood is deeply entrenched. To overcome them with violence would result in a massive loss of life, an unfortunate consequence which itself would endanger the mission. The protectors should be more flexible if they want to attract more people to their cause. The Brotherhood was formed to liberate the people from the shackles of the ship authority. Their first sally, which the fossils of the old world called mutiny, did not completely achieve this aim. However, the Brotherhood was successful in establishing themselves as a significant power in the New Order. Unfortunately, the Brotherhood's subsequent attempts to complete their emancipation of the enslaved, wherever they may be, ran into an unexpected obstacle. Not only did the people refuse to cooperate in this noble mission, they often violently resisted and sometimes even chose the protectors of the Church over their own best interests. The war goes on, but will be fought on different battlefields with different tactics. A non-military campaign to win over the people through reason and deceit, weakening the enemy from within, is the central pillar of this new strategy. The Brotherhood did end the tyranny of the ship authority, giving us a choice in how to live our lives. They shouldn't try to take this choice away now. Huh, interesting. Your beliefs and opinion may change and evolve over the course of the game as you interact with factions, groups, and various individuals. Keep in mind that actions speak much louder than words, and that saying one thing and doing another won't fool people for long. And I'm gonna begin my adventure, and I'm pretty sure that whole ordeal was just to teach us about what the setting is, because it is a complicated setting, a political setting, a religious setting as well. Very, very interesting. 
uh, right off the bat, and uh, you open your eyes to a grey hull metal ceiling, one panel of which flickers yellow, indicating day shift. You overslept, not that it matters. With a grunt, you roll off your stained mattress and open the, quote, window, unquote, to let some fresh air in. Like everything else around here, fresh is relative. The ship does its best to recycle air and water, but cargo holds aren't high on her priority list. That's capital H pri priority list, which means it's the ship's priority list. You breathe in metal and burning oil and look up. Four of the bridge's six projectors are still operational, shining dully down on the container tower of Cargo Hold 3, better known as the Pit, the Free City. Calling the Pit a city is a bit of a stretch, but so is calling this reddish-brown liquid water. You've read that water is supposed to be clear and cities are supposed to be big, but no shipborn has ever seen either. Maybe in another hundred years, water will look and taste like oil and people will be talking about the good old days when it was the color of rust and tasted refreshingly bitter and tangy. That's the kind of optimism that keeps you going. The elevator crawls up a groove in the cargo hold's wall like a black steel bug that's worn a path traveling to the bridge and back. It's time to get up there and earn a few credits. But first, you need a drink. And I'm going to make my way to a nearby bar called Whiskey Jack. And uh, we can press tab to highlight items. We can scroll back and scroll in. I'm not sure if we can rotate the camera. Right now, middle click does this, this uh, camera zoomy thing. Uh, right click moves your character. And I'm going to use WSD to move the camera like this. It is actually pretty fast. I'm not sure if uh, we're going to have the choice to increase or decrease the speed at which we uh, move the camera. But just a few starting directions so that we know where to go and that you know where to go if you want to play this game and check it out for yourself. We've got links in the description, obviously. So right here is somebody that's going to teach us about stealing. And uh, there's a, a stuff that you can steal from and actually get yourself readied up a little. Uh, because our inventory, when you press I, is actually, yeah, we have an SMG over here, so that's not going to be too bad. I'm going to get that right there, and we have a weapon over here that is o that only has one shot. You can right-click to reload, and you need to unload stuff if you want it unloaded, and uh, that's that's our setup over here. Right now, we have a vest, which is better than nothing, and actually, you can strip yourself out of that vest, and uh, look at that form-fitting rubber suit. That's, uh, yeah, that is that is our clothing. That's what passes for clothing here. So... We have a pretty big map, and we can look around all over the place. Oh my god, I had not seen this. We got a power station over here, and if you press M, you actually see basically the same map. It's just a screenshot at the moment. Uh, right now, we have the Main Street map and the Camp Town map over here. Uh, that's the Camp Town, I believe, that we access by just going up that way. There's a way to get there, but I have not found it out yet. And there's a lot of stuff down here, including what looks like an elevator but could be something else, I'm not 100% sure. So, the promised land, look at that. Uh, we have a lot of stuff, we are gonna want to talk to Whiskey Jack over here. So right there is where Whiskey Jack is, but before I do that, I'll actually wanna go and uh, have a chat with our neighbor over here because that is the still thing that I was talking about. Another day, hey Titus, says Javier raising a cup of the black blend of chemicals that has passed for coffee aboard the ship for at least a generation. It looks like it. Any big plans? I've got a job on a diving crew, says Javier, taking another sip. They lost two men last week, so they hired me on the spot. Must be my lucky day. Diving, huh? As in diving into the mission control ruins. It's like a maze down there. Sealed doors, corridors, entire decks. They cut the power to kill the auto turrets, which didn't make things easier. Now there's a demand for divers who can open doors of old fa the old-fashioned way. It yeah, sounds useful. Can you give me any f any pointers? I can show you the basics. The rest is up to you. See this lock over there? And uh, he, I gain insight into lockpick. And in fact, I just gain a point in lockpick, which is pretty sweet. Because, uh, yeah, now we can open that. And as I picked the lock just then, and also gained experience, because I think that is how you level up. So we got some boots, the worker boots right there, and some 9mm ammo, which is actually pretty good, because that is the the thing that I use for my weapon. Let's loot that, and let's see. You managed to open the lock, Titus gained 20 learning points in lockpick. Actually, is that how that works? Look at that. It is basically experience. They call it learning points right now. So I think basically the moment you max that out, you get another point that you can apply? Or do you get that just by practicing. I wonder. Well, let's find out. Anyway, hey, thanks for uh, for the tip, I suppose. What about you, neighbor? I'm done with this fucking town, says Charlie, his eyes empty and lifeless. Two days I've been here, and what do I have to show for it? Nothing. 
Huh, what are you gonna do? Go back to the habitat? I guess so, nods Charlie. It doesn't seem so bad now. The habitat don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, take care, Charlie. Yeah, why did you come down here? This uh, just feels like a bad time. So anyway, let's get down here. We have what looks like a res What is that? The target is out of reach, yes, but it is a biorecycler. These biorecyclers break all organic matter from waste to dead bodies gathered each morning into s simple organic compounds and mineralized nutrients, which the ship turns into end tabs. It's the cycle of life. Actually, it's the circle of life in that case. Let's have a chat with the bar. Moore is the name. No, that's not the bar. That is the, the traitor. Let's go this way instead then. Hey, Whiskey Jack. What can I get you? The bartender has spotted you looking over the assortment of unlabeled plastic gallon jugs, itch with its own unappealing liquid in some shade of brown. We got gut warmer, rat poison, high voltage, fire water, and absolution. Special on the rat poison right now. Every third round is free for as long as you are able to drink it. Uh, rat poison it is then. The ship provides the basics of human survival. Recycled air, recycled water, and end tabs. Recycled nutrients and minerals pressed into chewable tablets. They taste like cardboard, but they're free. Those who desire the finer things in life, like synthetic meat with a side of algae, have to pay. Because the forefathers disapproved of drink, the ship was never configured to provide alcohol, but the law of supply and demand supersedes the dictates of religion, and everyone's favorite vice is widely available. Each bar has its own secret recipe. The wise drinker prefers to live it a secret. The bartender gives you a nod as he sets a beaten alloy mug on the bar and fills it with a black oily liquid. You take a careful first sip, fighting your body's instinctive rejection of poison and wait for the familiar warmth to spread through you. After a few moments, the world is a slightly better place. I've got a job for you, Titus, says Stanner, gesturing for another round. Interested? Yeah, what kind of job? An easy one. Tanner pulls a plastic rectangle from a compartment inside his sleeve and slides it toward you. The card is old and worn. The color has long faded, but the raised print on the front is still as clear as the day it was stamped. A2, that's armory level 2, the holy grail of every scavenger on the ship. During the mutiny, the rebels looted every depot on the first level, but the automated defenses on the second stopped them dead. Literally, those same turrets have dissuaded every scavenger since. Is it real? Is it real? repeats Stanner, miming a look of disbelief. Son, if you don't have the stones for it, just say so. Don't insult me. Yeah, every scav worth his salt has been searching for this card for decades. But you're the one who found it? I have my ways. Tanner's smile reveals stained, uneven teeth. You see, I wasn't looking for a long-lost access card, since I'm not a fool. I was looking for technical officer Ulysses Colton. Tanner pauses so you can show your admiration for his savvy. Let me guess, he had the card and you alone figured it out? Not quite, says Tanner. I alone figured out how to find a man who changed his identity and died in obscurity nearly a hundred years ago. Uh, I have a feeling you're dying to tell me. Tanner pulls a battered energy pistol from his belt bag and passes it to you. This is his sidearm. He changed his name, but he couldn't change the serial number on his gun. Once I found the serial number, the rest is easy. His granddaughter sold the pistol 20 years ago. I'm gonna inspect the pistol. It's an old, rust-covered energy pistol fastened with tape. Its plasma chamber hasn't seen any action in decades. Are you sure the card still works? Only one way to find out. Tanner grins in an unnerving way. Go see for yourself. When you come back, we'll have a proper conversation. What do you think we'll find? Whatever it is, it'll be worth a lot of money, Tanner says with certainty. We hold out for the right buyer and we'll live like kings the rest of our days. I'd feel safer if I had someone to watch my back. Take Evans. I saw him at Abe's store earlier today. The dumb bastard almost shot me. And uh, that sounds like the right man for the job. Because now we have a quest. Neighborhood Watch. That seems like a very tame way of... Uh, very tame way of calling this quest that seems like it's going to be super dangerous. I mean, it feels like it. So, we need to go. If I press J to Abe's store. If I press M, I can see Abe's store is up there. Clicking there actually fast travels me here. Cool. Oh, that's that's really cool. Okay, so, hey, Evans. Oh, right. 
Abe. What's up, Abe? Welcome to Abe's, says Abe, his face distorted by a permanent smile. Everything is on sale on this very special day. I can steal stuff, even though I definitely cannot. Don't steal stuff if you can't steal stuff. Basically, the way I, the way you play The Age of Decadence is you go for the stuff that you're good at, you leave the stuff that you're bad at for other players and other characters that you're even ever really gonna play as because it's a game made to be replayable. And this game is made to be replayable as well, I'm sure. So, you say that every day. Can't help it, shrugs Abe. Every day is a very special day. Does the sign ever work? You're the only one who's complaining. Maybe I should charge you extra. No, don't charge me extra. Let me sit. Well, actually, I'm not sure. Ooh. Damaged energy pistol. I'm sure I could fix it if I were good at it. That is a really expensive weapon. A thousand bucks. But it only sells for 200 right there. Okay. Yeah, we're, uh, it's, it's fine. Evans, being a gunfighter is a quick and easy way to make a living in the pit. All it takes is a gun and some guts. It's also a quick and easy way to wind up dead, but the kind of men drawn to the gun always think they're going to live forever. Evans learned the realities of his new trade the hard way. The first time, Evans got lucky and killed his man as he fumbled his draw. Riding high, Evans called out an old hand who put three bullets in his chest and left him for dead. Lucky for Evans, a stranger patched him up and he survived. But today he looks like a man whose luck has just run out. Titus, nods Evans. What brings you to these parts? He asks, his bolt action rifle still pointed your way. I have a job for you. A job? Evans pretends to think about it for a moment. Truth be told, I've got a job for you too. All you've got to do is stick around and watch my back while I deal with these thugs. You do that for me, I'll do whatever you need. No questions asked. Deal? Uh, what thugs? Jonas sent some gun thugs to harass Abe. He nods at the storekeep. Abe here went to the regulators, but Braxton said he can't spare any men. You and I both know the bastard doesn't want to get involved. So Abe hired me to watch the store. But the son of a bitch didn't say a word about Jonas until I agreed. I'm no coward, but I don't want to go against Jonas alone. He runs this down for Christ's sake. Why did Abe go to the regulators? Beats me. We all agreed to hire the regulators when the Brotherhood started eyeing the pit and getting ideas. Only reason they're still around, now that the Brotherhood's backed off, is to make sure they don't come back. At any rate, their job is to show that we have some muscle, even if it's a hired muscle, to sort out our local trouble. What does Jonas want from Abe? Money? What else? His thugs said everyone who does business in the pit has to pay taxes or pack up and go. I told Abe he should pay, but he doesn't want to listen to reason. If he wants to die, that's his business. But now I'm going to go down with him. Uh, well, uh, let's see. Let's wait and see what transpires. I am a little bit on the ready side of things, but not really too much. So, here's something that you should remember to do. Save your game. I didn't save my game. The gun thugs show up around noon. A man in his 40s who moves with slow confidence and a brash young man eager to get himself killed. You got Jonah's money? Demands the kid, talking tough. The elder man stays quiet, keeping his eyes on you and Evans. Uh... I'm gonna take the initiative here, because I'm actually not too bad at initiative, considering the amount of dexterity that I have, I think. So let's kill them. And now we have the combat. So, basic things first. If you left-click anywhere, your character faces wherever you want your character to face. If you right-click anywhere, actually not anywhere, you can't put it over here, but uh, anywhere on the grid, your character can start off where you want your character to start off. And you can select a different character by clicking on the character right here, although it seems like your portrait disappears when you click them down here, so let's, let's just click them up here. So, um, yeah, these guys are just gun thugs. Shouldn't be much of a problem. Our hit chance is awful, though. 26%, but our graze is not too bad. So what do I want to do with that? I'm going to put myself over here, and uh, hopefully things are going to work out. And we have a bolter rifle with a single action uh, or a single gunshot. So I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. 64 and 73. Let's see. That's 26. That is really not good. This weapon sucks. So uh, that's how you start combat, basically. You click over here, and now we have... The turn order, right there, lovely. The game actually tells you that before. Oh, I forgot that I, I need to use WSD. It's a little bit better than edge scrolling. Although edge scrolling is also a feature. So, uh, I want to kill you first, I'm going to say. 
you're actually easier to kill. So, something that you need to be very careful of is, you see the action points down here, 16? Well, you can choose what type of fire you shoot a, you shoot as. So regular shots and snapshots. Later, uh, I think in melee you probably have power shots or power strikes and all that. And then you have the uh, type of aimed attacks that you can do over here. And each one of them has a uh, basically bonus and, and a good thing to do or a bad thing to do. Like, for example, aimed arms over here that uh, will be harder to hit, I think. Or will it be easier to hit? No, actually, I think that is a plus 10 to accuracy. It will lower their uh, to hit chance, that's what THC stands for, and also their action points, uh, depending on whether you crit or you uh, just do a normal attack. Do I have any special... At These attacks always make it easier to hit? That's good, that's really good, because that way you can make your calculations based on how much action points you have. So right now, this uses seven action points, a regular shot, we can do a snapshot, that this one does indeed lower your accuracy by 15, so we can just go for it. Uh, the likelihood of missing is really low, you can see there the yellow being the grays, uh, and uh, that's actually pretty good. So let's let's consider that for a moment, because if I want to go for a headshot over here or something like that, let's actually see what the headshot does. So you need to hover over that. The headshot lowers their perception and knocks them out on a critical chance. Mm. I don't know. I don't think I want to go with that. This lowers... Mm -hmm. So let's, cal let's calculate this. I have 16 action points, which means that I can use 8 action points to do an attack. This, unfortunately, actually is nine action points. So if we do six plus six plus six, it's 18. So we need to go for a snapshot instead of, a, no, we need to go for a regular shot that does seven action points and we're gonna still have two action points to add to our defense because every time you end our turn, you can see over here that uh, it adds some of that, which I believe is uh, reaction. I'm not actually sure what that symbol is supposed to be, but yeah. So, either we do a regular shot or we do aimed shots. Aimed shots are not looking... Let's start off with a regular shot. Let's uh, let's go for that one over here. And 50 HP. Hmm. Well, the problem is... That weapon only has one shot. This one has more. But it uses four action points. It also has fanning as an ability. Hmm. It uses 11 action points for that. That is pretty sweet. Let's go for an aimed center mass that uses six action points. We could go for snapshots. What is the chance of that? 33, there's a lot of grazes there. Uh, that's pretty nice, let's go for it. The sooner we can neutralize this guy, the better. That's one graze and that's two grazes. That's all right because now we have our burst weapon and we have an aimed burst that uses 10 action points. We have 16 still. We have a short burst that uses eight action points. So that's two short bursts. And uh, that is actually pretty good. Uh, and I was indeed aiming for the one that's easier to kill. This might end in bad things, but we'll see. And then we have the long burst that lowers accuracy by, oh, that's why these things are hard. Because we're on a burst right now. That's why it's a low to hit chance. If I do an aimed burst, no, it's still the same thing. It's minus 25. The long burst is even worse then. It's it's zero. Uh, it's a 5% chance. I suppose that's always going to be possible to do a 5% chance to hit. But the graze is really what you want, because it's a long burst. What is... I can do a single shot. So we're going to go with a couple of short bursts, because those are more controlled, and I can do two of them. So with any luck, we can actually kill this guy in a single burst. We cannot but we kill kill him in two bursts. Oh, taking cover, huh? And missing. That's my favorite kind of trouble. Okay, so now I could ch switch my weapon. I actually don't know what Evans is gonna be like in terms of skills, but with snapshots, we could just fire away, or we could try the fanning that lowers accuracy. Fa so snapshots, that's regular shot right there. Snapshot, you can see the one that you have selected down there. Snapshot is a minus 15. So fanning is probably better just as a default attack. If you don't know what fanning is, it's when you, uh, well, I'm not sure if, how this weapon works exactly, but it's uh, when you fire, uh, click the trigger, and then the, the bolt, I think it's called, that thing just comes back, uh, comes back up every time you pull the trigger. So you need to pull it down to cock the weapon again. And so basically you're using it sort of as an automatic, or it's, it's, it's a manual, it's a two action 
weapon, but uh, it's still, it's always a manual weapon, but you're using it sort of as a semi-automatic. It does lose a lot of control, and it does lose a lot of uh, precision, just because you're shooting from the hip, because you can't aim with a down, aim down sights, which this gun actually has. So we have five action points remaining. I'm just going to go with a aimed shot. Let's see if I can, which I can't. The uh, six, no, we have none of those. So let's go with a regular shot. Let's hope that we get a good one here. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Oh, no. Well, fortunately, reloading should be okay. Should I reload on these, this gun? What is it, the hit chance? The hit chance is actually pretty sweet, so I'll go ahead and do that. Oh, it's two action points to reload. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, let's end the turn and see what I can do with this. Because I could use the suicide special. Although the problem here is that because the character is behind cover, I really would benefit from going over there. That is going to use nine action points. That should be fine. I'm not sure if you can change your, your uh, heading when you're in combat, because left-clicking doesn't actually do anything. I haven't found that out yet. Uh, and I don't know if it matters where your character is looking either, so let's. I guess we're going to find out. So we have uh, seven action points. and Oh, we can actually shoot. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. So we're going to go with uh, minus the hit chance. Oh, the mm, that is not good. Okay, well, we're going to need to do something here then. Go with a regular shot. That landed. Go over here. And now we're behind cover. So you're reloading and missing. Reaction attack. Apparently that's the thing. You used your... You jerk. You used your thing. Maybe that doesn't matter. Because we... We're good at this. So should I go for the head? Let's go for the head. Aimed head. That is a daze. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. And you're gonna stay there. And I'm gonna try... So this gun is only one, so we're going to press R to reload, and I'm going to move over here and do a 56. That is a kill. All right, pretty straightforward. But this stuff can be dangerous. This stuff can kill you if you're not ready for this. And here, I think it probably can't, because Evans is ready for this. Although, without our help, yeah. So, that is it. What do we do now? Asks Evans, visibly shaken. Well, we have to see it through, I suppose. It's your call, says Evans. I'll... I reckon I'll stick with you until this thing blows over. Welcome aboard. All right, a moment of your time, Titus. Yes, you don't say. Definitely a moment of my time. Also, I want to look at, uh, specifically... Yeah, I will want to bring SMGs up as, as much as I can. Because that's my tag skill, is just to make it a little bit easier to learn. That's what tagging skills is. And another thing that you should do as soon as you get a companion is tag their skills as well. So let's look at Evans first off in terms of what he's good at. He's good at rifle and pistols, but that is because we did that just then. Uh, so we can tag those two and just make him a good gunslinger. And it's not a bad idea. He also has bladed, if you want that. His uh, dexterity is good. His perception is really good. He's got a little bit of intelligence, which is also pretty sweet. And then on the right side, you can see the reputations and whatnot. I think that's that's that applies to everybody. He's a tough bastard, so extra HP. Enemy's critical chance is capped at 5%, which is also very nice. And we, oh, we have beliefs down here. I forgot about that. Yes, definitely, we see the beliefs down there. Pretty cool way of tracking your morality. Although, yeah, actions speak louder than words, and that is always how it should be. You shouldn't be locked by, oh, no, your authority is, is very low. You can't do this option in this quest. Well, maybe that's how the game is going to work. Hopefully it isn't, but we're going to see. So, as I was saying, you really should, as soon as you get a companion, you really should get a skill tagged. So, for him, I'm going to go up on... So, I got SMG. I'm going to go up on rifle. This action can't be undone. Proceed? Yes. Yes, 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 proceed. And I don't know if I, I can tag another one. Yeah, I don't know where it says how many skills I can tag, but I can definitely tag another one. Otherwise things wouldn't show up over there. He's also an evasion kind of person, uh, which is not necessarily the greatest, considering how he's got Tough Bastard over here. Although, maybe that is a good thing. I don't know. Let's uh, just make him evasive as possible, and uh, I'll just get him at the front, and hopefully pistols, I'll just use pistols a lot, and then whenever I use rifles, it, it goes up faster. So there it is. Two skills tagged for him. I don't know what that does. I'm a little bit afraid to test it. And uh, another thing, as I was saying, Let's see if F5 works to quick save the game. F5 does indeed work to quick save the game, so that is my tip for you, because as far as I know... Ooh, you can also quick save from here. As far as I know, the game doesn't autosave at the current state, and uh, you don't want to lose your uh, your autosave. So this is going to be it for the first episode of this game. 
hopefully you enjoyed it, and hopefully you'll check the game out when it comes out, either on early access or on final release, and obviously if uh, you're watching this and the game is already out, if the final release has already come about, then I probably have uh, the full Let's Play going on on my channel, because I play a lot of RPGs and other games that aren't RPGs as well, so I'd really appreciate it if you joined me for those adventures, because I have a lot of fun with all the games that I play, and uh, this is a this is a major RPG that's coming up. So hang in there. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye.